love with that a little bit as well. Hi, Dad. Can I watch the show? Uh, hey, kiddo. I'm kind of recording right oh. now. Sorry about the garage light. Should I turn that off? Uh. Wow, that's really bright. Yeah, I, maybe I can play with the garage light on now. Um, wow, that's cool. <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead and watch the All right, thanks. I'll start over. Hey everybody, it's CE Sim Golf. My name is Chris and I'm a GS Pro designer. I'm back with a look at another new projector. Today we have the BenQ 936ST4K laser projector. Thank you to BenQ for sending it to me to review. I'm also going to look at the progress I've made on Wingfoot, which is my next course coming out. Yeah, it's still going. It takes me a while, but I'm getting excited. It's getting much closer now. Uh, yeah, so here's a little spoiler. That 936 is getting quite the reputation, and it is well-deserved. I love it. Let's find out why. Behold, the LK936 ST. This thing is a short-throw 4K laser projector. Will never get dull. Has a blistering 5,100 lumens, and from a short-throw distance, that is crazy bright. You will not need to play with the lights off anymore with this baby. Uh, native resolution, 4K, aspect ratio of 16.9, although it supports 16.10, 4.3, and others as well. On the back, it has two HDMI inputs. It has a LAN port, USB, has a digital audio out for a wicked sound system, and a few other options as well. First thing I'm going to do is visit the golfsimplanner.benq.com, which is where I can look at a virtual room and my specific model projector with its throw ratio involved, and I can figure out exactly what my mount distance is. Now, the most important thing is not the height from the ceiling or anything like that. It's this distance, um, which if you look at it, it's the distance from the screen to the projector, how far back. Um, so what we're going to do is, first thing, you know, you can change your golfer, your launch monitor side. None of that matters a whole lot. But uh, one of the interesting things I've seen is the height of the room. The image is always floating up here. Again, it doesn't really matter. We're looking for distance from screen. Um, you can fudge your room height, minus 12. But if I drop it down to 9, uh, you can get it a little bit more you want to see it. I'm going to go with my uh, ratio is closer to 1610. And what you change then is the height. And that will automatically then change your width, which is in a gray number down here. Um, so that's going to automatically change it. I know my, I'm looking for width on mine. Most of you probably will. I'm looking for about 11 and a half is about my width. That's going to give me a height about 7, 7, 2. That sounds about right for me. So I know that's correct. Uh, I've got the projector that I am working on right here, although you can select any of their models. Uh, and then it will give you your throw distance. Uh, those are the basics. It's pretty quick. Um, 10.4 is my throw distance. T to screen is not going to matter a ton, except that if you look at this guy, it can you can see his shadow. So you can see um, how high you would want to mount it to get rid of that shadow. That's pretty cool too. Uh, the advanced settings down here do show ceiling to bottom of projector. So for instance, um, that will affect your shadow distance, right? Um, so if you want to have it all the way at the bottom of the screen there, and then you slide him up and back, then you're going to start seeing the shadow, right? So you just have to keep in mind uh, how far back you want it, how far down you want it, but you might need to add to this 1.4 feet it's giving me right now if you also have more ceiling height, which I changed and made it uh, false reading up here. So for instance, for this 1.4 down and a nine height, I know that's really 4.4 because I need to add back the three feet I removed from my room height. <clears throat> so keep all that in mind. But the number we really care the most about is our 10.4 back. Now this also gives you your horizontal move so you can offset, right? And then you can shift back. Um, it'll, it, there's not a ton of shift, but this gives you the shift that is available in the menu, right? So you can see, I can get about that far and still have a centered image. You can see how far that is offset. 
Uh, and that actually looks very accurate. I've already done this in my setup and that looks very accurate. One thing I will say, I have found this 10.4 that it's giving me for a setback, I would add to that. I would add at least six to 12 inches farther back. And this is why. The menu items and the digital zooms and the corner fits and all of those adjustments you can make, make the image smaller. But there are not options to make the image bigger. And we know that by mounting further back, the image gets bigger. So I would mount farther back, use the menu and digital options inside the projector to then shrink fit the image. I made the mistake of using this exact number and my image wasn't big enough. I didn't quite fill my space. I knew I could get another six inches uh, of fill space and I wanted to maximize that. So I had to remount another foot farther back. So I would just add a foot to what it tells you and then use the menu options to shrink the image perfectly to your space. So let's go take a look at how I have that set up and how I got it perfect. Before you fire up that projector, here's some quick tips. Obviously, lights are a no-no. The darker, the better. If you have a projector with this many lumens, you can get away with some light, but I wouldn't suggest too much. I can get away with one light like this. Some people will need a completely dark room with a spotlight. I love this little three LED aimable light. I'll put a link to it. Screen quality plays a huge factor here as well. Impact screens are not like movie screens or your wall. They have a weave pattern, even the most high quality ones will include, uh, when you look close enough, small areas, gaps where light can come through. So make sure you get the highest quality screen you can if you have a projector of this quality. Make sure you replace it when it gets dirty like this or beat up and frayed. And even sometimes with the best, you're gonna want some backing. I use memory foam behind mine. It's a mattress topper, two inches. Really what it does is a little quieter, a little less bounce back, but it also fills in that back to give a better picture quality. Something like blackout curtains is also gonna be a huge benefit, especially if you don't have a premium screen. If you have something that's a little more economical, it's gonna have a less tight weave, more light will get through. You're gonna to wanna to add something behind it for the highest quality picture that you can get. But if you have a projector that you've invested with that is this good, spend the money on a premium screen. It is absolutely gonna be the difference between the greatest picture ever and something just above average. Now then, let's take a look at this thing. Here we go. Um, I will tell you I had no problems getting this centered and easily configured using all of the options in the menu. I'm just going to go through what is available, especially some of the color settings. wanted to give you a real-time look at this on my impact screen, so I hope you can read the menu all right. My webcam is not the greatest. I already have it in golf mode, but there's a couple other worth mentioning. Bright is very nice. Uh, it's actually just maybe a little bluer, not quite so much green, at least in the grass areas. sRGB is pretty straightforward. Um, I would say that's kind of a standard look at things. And the really nice thing I like about this are the user ones. You can go through user management and load the settings from other modes and then tweak them from there. So for instance, if I wanted to basically copy golf mode over, all the settings will follow into user and then I can make small changes and I don't have to worry about screwing up the default golf mode on that. Now, I found Brilliant Color to be an interesting setting. It's a really quick way to dial back the overall saturation of things. It, it does bring the brightness down as well, in my opinion but it, uh, it brings down the saturation just a little bit, makes it look a little more natural, Got everything I installed now. Um, I oh, haven't down. used it when playing it GS Pro and Golf uh, Mode. I'm gonna bring the camera in, take a look at some of the menu items that are available, are. although I'm not gonna go through the full installation process. I did this in a recent video with the 820 and I found the process to be nearly identical. Menu items are nearly identical, all the options of um, digital zoom, any of the offset commands, the corner fit, all of that is in that video and worked precisely as well with this one. I got the setup perfect. 
So if you want to see how all those menu items can work, uh, I will link to that here on screen. And take a look at that video too for some of that more advanced setup. But I'm just going to jump straight into just the way this thing looks. Let's take a look at it, uh, look at how clear it is, and look at the color options. Light source is going to change if you are using eco mode or dim mode. I can see that maybe being useful in movie watching. I haven't tried things like that. There's really no reason that I'm aware of that you'd want to do this in eco mode. It's a laser projector. It's got tens of thousands of hours, not worried about the bulb. So I'm not gonna bother with that. I have done almost nothing with the audio on this. I have heard the sound. It's actually quite loud. It comes with a good volume, but it's not very rich. I use a sound bar for that. I don't think anyone is expecting different. Display settings here, aspect resolution 1610. That's what I use. It's got 169 as well and super wide 24-1. That would be sweet if I had the room for a screen that big, but I do not. I'll talk really briefly about some of the digital options like corner fit and shift. Uh, I've already done these on mine. You can see my settings up there. I've bumped it 19 over on this side down. Uh, one thing I find with the corner fit, it's very useful as kind of a backup keystone. It helps you really get those edges horizontal and vertical where maybe you're just messing around a bit too much with keystone and they won't all four fit. Bumping these corners really help helps you straighten out the image. When I was working with the online golf sim planner, I mentioned that I wanted to mount my projector maybe a foot farther back than it recommended. That's because of this feature, digital shrink. You can see how it tightens your image, makes it smaller. So if you've mounted too far back, you can zoom in, tighten the image up, but if you've mounted too far forward, that does not go the other way. You can't make it get the image larger. So you need to go a little oversized by mounting farther back and then tighten it up with that digital shrink and shift it left and right if you're off center. You can see here some of the other menu options, the system information, blah, blah, blah. Now, enough of this. Can we please see some golf courses? Let's fire up GS Pro and take a look. I wanted to show you what the transition from standard to golf looks like. It's pretty incredible. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing, but not only does the color scream off, it's sharper. Um, it's every blade of grass just explodes off the screen even more than it did before. Um, I'm not sure how that is, I'm not sure why that is, but it's, it's real. And I hope that my webcam is picking it up. I'm going to fly around a little bit here, and then we'll take a look at some uh, some of the lighting options in GS Pro. Uh, here's the long grass on Prairie Dunes, uh, Prairie Knolls. It's, it's just crisp. Um, 4K on this, with this amount of lumens, is just pretty spectacular. Even the sky, you can see definition and subtlety, um, even looking into the sun in all areas of it. The cloud banks and everything. Um, I know that there were some questions when this course was released, some people having some issues uh, with the sky brightness in particular, uh, but this projector, no problem. I'm going to get right in here on the bunker details that I spent hundreds of hours on, because why not? Um, every little blade of, blade of grass, every overhang, pretty proud of all that, and I've never seen it um, this good, at least not in my simulator.
Let's look at the GS Pro lighting controls. This is the standard lighting panel. You can see you've got everything from environmental color, which is gonna control the brightness of a lot of your 3D objects, things like that without affecting grass and sky too much. Bloom is kind of like your lens flare look. Depending on how the designer set it up, that may or may not adjust or change much of anything. The saturation slider, pretty self-explanatory. Many courses are a bit too green. You'll find that if you pull that down, you might get a more natural look. Um, sun strength, that's going to adjust your overall brightness of the course, uh, including kind of everything, the sky, the ground, it's very touchy. I would typically leave that right at one and play with the other things instead. For instance, sky brightness is a big one. You'll see some designers have set up these custom skies, like on prairie dunes here, prairie knolls. We have that very dramatic bank of clouds, incoming storm. Sky brightness will change just your sky, not your ground. Excellent for if you have issues with ball tracers. Now toggle advanced on the bottom left gives you this screen. This is totally independent of the designer's control and functions the same on all courses. So you can see it has wiped out the sky and you have these other choices. You can have any level of clouds, rain, snow, other weather like that. Um, some designers, depending on how they've set up their course, skies are gonna be quite bright. And in fact, I learned a bit um, with Prairie Knolls. I, I feel like we set it up purposefully for the ground, the grass. Those were the things we were trying to promote. I would say that we kind of blew the sky out just a little bit, there are some tricks for getting around that on, on some courses where you don't have quite the look you're going for. I find it very tempting using the advanced lighting control to do more of a sunrise sunset, but you'll see if you look at the sun, like right here, when you're looking directly into the sun, the sky is going to be blown out. You're going to have a hard time seeing your ball or the tracer. Now, I mean, that's real life, right? But it might be something to consider some reasons to choose a more neutral lighting setup, a midday. Um, this is hole five. I just love this green site. I'm super proud of the work we did on these mounds and on this grass and the clumpiness in there. Just love sitting here and looking. I'm gonna turn uh, the cloudiness down here. I'm gonna switch this to a bluer sky. You can see when you have a cloudy sky, the sky's very bright. Um, so you're getting really good view of the grass, really nice look on those mounds, really good everything except for the sky. Now, there's a way to do something about that. I want to show you a trick I use as a player. Back in the fairway on this approach shot here, you can see with a cloudy sky, overcast, it's going to be gray and then therefore very bright. So what I like to do is I go in and I change this all the way at the bottom to clear blue. And on the right, you can see my sky tint is all the way up at three. I've never seen a course where that's such a bad thing. It's rarely too blue by having it all the way up, maybe two and a half to three. But by doing that and choosing clear blue sky, you get a very rich look in the sky and your ball tracer shows up very well. You can even get away with some pretty good morning and evening lighting and still see your ball tracer. Here's finally a look at Wingfoot and the progress we're making. Now what's the first thing you think of? I think of, that's too saturated. That is not a natural green. Now is it gorgeous? Yeah. Is it a little bit too much? I think so. Now I've heard some people say that the 936 golf mode is too saturated, but I am honestly looking at this a different way. I think that this is showing me that I need to tone it down and that I'm reaching an unrealistic look in my design. So that's why it's important as a designer to look at things not just on your monitor, but also on your impact screen and where people will actually be playing this. One reason I'm feeling this way is because if I look at the sky, which I wanted to go for that kind of dusk pinkish hue, I love it. I think that it's bringing the subtlety and just kind of the very gentle shades of color out really well. And I love the fog. I went a little heavy, but I, I kind of wanted that look. 
So everything about that looks good to me. And the grass itself, I think as a designer, I just went a little bit, maybe a lot, too green on this. So I'm not too worried about that at this point. I just want to look at some other areas on the course. And that's going to show me as a designer what I should go back and adjust. Here's a terrifying hole you didn't see during the 2020 US Open. This is on the East course, a only 320 yard par four, but who would be daring enough to go for it? Maybe they should have used it. I'm gonna fly down and take a look slowly at some of the creek that meanders its way through here. Look out across, again, I think the trees look pretty darn good. I think some of the close-ups of the grass just looks a little too dark and um, no doubt beautiful, but just a bit too green. So what I did now was I switched over to that advanced lighting. Like I was saying, the standard lighting is a package the designer of the course sets up. Standard works across all courses differently. So if I, as a designer, set things up a little screwy, standard lighting is going to show that more maybe than advanced. So when I switched over to advanced, the first thing I'm seeing is sky is brighter. I've lost that uh, sunset look, but my distance trees, they look great. In fact, I like it even more, which tells me I was pumping the color and the fog a little more than I should have. And I think advanced is kind of looking a little better. Now the grass still a bit too saturated, not a lot different, but it's subtle and it's there. And uh, I appreciate finding that out here. Now, while all 36 holes are complete as far as the modeling and terrain on Wingfoot, the last hole I want to show you today is this just a lovely little par 3. The East course is almost known for its par 3s more than anything. This is number 13. I'm adjusting the lighting just playing around. You can get lost doing that. Uh, this little 160 yard shot is quite a doozy. Uh, Tillingus is known for his diabolical greens. And this one's no different. Perched way up high. I believe it is 9 or 10 feet off the left edge, especially off the back left. Uh, so I'm going to fly in here and we're going to take a look at the green side here. I'll leave you with this. Then we're going to take a look at a goodie but an oldie of mine just to confirm my suspicions that I am a little too saturated right now on Wingfoot. So this of course is Quail Hollow. I designed this one last winter about this time. It came out last spring for the uh, PGA Tour SGT event. Um, and I felt like I did a pretty good job with the colors on this course and so I wanted to revisit it on this projector. Uh, and I think it confirms my suspicions. Uh, is the 936 Gulf Mode a little hot on the color? Perhaps. Uh, if there's anything I could say that maybe it could be toned down a little bit, but they give you those controls to do so. I do think it also opened my eyes to the fact that I was abusing green a little bit on Wingfoot. I mean, it's a lush course, it's a pristine course, and it's easy to fall into that trap as a designer of making things just pop and just saturate. So it's good to look at things and dial it back. Um, I do think, yeah, you could probably take things down a notch. I think everyone likes to see that though. So maybe this is Ben Q's golf mode giving people what they want. Clearly they're not destroying the colors because you can see every little wisp of clouds in these skies and everything with that 5,100 lumens of brightness. There is no detail that cannot be seen. there you go, the BenQ 936 ST, 4K, laser projector, and something that I can now play in my sim with lights on. Uh, as much as I love the A20, and I did, the color that that brought to the table with the new golf mode, that got me closer to the way I wanted my golf designs to look than anything I'd seen before it. But as a 1080 projector, no, it was not as clear as you could get. The 936, Best of both worlds.
golf mode absolutely screams off of your screen. And uh, I mean that in a 90% good way. Maybe it could be dialed back a little bit. Uh, that's going to be a personal choice. People love to see green saturated golf courses. That is why you see literature, promotional material, all the things online that golf courses put out about themselves. It's Photoshop. It's pumped up. People love to see deep colors, rich greens, sunsets, things like that. But that is not the way the real world looks. And so if that's the way you want to play in your sim, this projector will give you that in spades. It is incredible from a color and clarity standpoint. If you want to dial it back a little bit, if you want a more natural look, that is very possible, especially when you consider what you can do with the lighting and saturation controls in GS Pro. I think GS Pro is the leader in sim software. Those kind of features are why. Not only is the gameplay awesome, but you have infinite control over that. As a designer, this is going to give me every tool I need to see on my simulator what I want when I'm sitting at my computer designing. Um, the clarity is there, the color is there, the brightness is there. Do you have to consider the cost? Of course. Is it for everyone? No. If you're going to be spending this amount of money on a projector and your simulator, you have to be pretty serious about it, right? Um, are there a million other options out there? Well, at least dozens to consider, but I've played with four projectors in my simulator over the last five years. I've played in three local commercial sim centers, and this is the best looking picture I've seen of those. Uh, that is my point of reference. As a designer, I couldn't be happier. I can't imagine upgrading anything after this. This feels like the best I'm gonna get. And now I'm looking forward to maybe getting a new screen, something cleaner, something very premium, gets us the best out of this projector I can. Thanks for watching. Look for more from Wingfoot. It's coming very soon. Maybe by the time you see this video, that will even be out. Thank you to Ben Q. Really appreciate the projector and it is amazing. Signing off, this is CE Simgolf. Here's an exciting update since I first started filming this video. Winged Foot, also known as Winged Foot, is now available east and west course for GS Pro. Thanks for watching everyone. Hit them straight.